glad to see that there's a really uh, diverse multicultural audience in the crowd today because the conversation that we're going to have, Breaking the Bamboo Ceiling, does talk a lot about how cultural differences impact Asians. And I'm going to share with you a lot of anecdotes that actually get to that experience. But I think that the idea of cultural fluency, I think that we can probably all benefit from this universal idea that we need to be effective at managing cultures and leading multicultural teams, leading global teams, and being able to compete uh, in the next uh, 21st century. If someone were to run into you, someone who can have a major role in your career here at New York Life, and he were to sit down with you and say, hey, it's good to see you again. How's it going? What's going on with you? Do you have a good answer to that question? And I don't mean just, I'm fine, thanks, bye-bye. You know? <laughs> we want to do that sometimes. I'm like, That's too much exposure right now. It's a little bit too much. Yet sometimes we're not ready for those conversations, right? We kind of say, well, you know, I wasn't ready for that question, right? <laughs> like, well, no one's ready for that question in a real way. So I think the good thing you could do in that situation is really prepare something, something that you can internalize, a statement that you can use pretty readily at any of these situations where if someone asked you a question like that, you could say something like, well, you know, I'm so glad you asked. You know, I've been working in this division, in this department for um, the last two years, and I've actually, in the last few months, we've landed this new client. I've been working on this for months. But, you know, I, I know this is not a great place to talk, but I'd love to get on your calendar sometime. What's the best way to do it? Now, as they became a senior manager, as they kind of bumped their head a bit against the, the ceiling, per se, they realized the job description yet again changed, right? So they had passed through the reliable producer mode, right? They, they were pretty much known as the, the people who can get the work done. They were you know, accurate. The clients liked them. It was, it was, it was pretty much standard. They moved then to this uh, relationship builder mode. People knew them. People liked them. They had, a, they had relationships that could, could help them get their work done. Now they had to be able to impact the organization, right? So what they did and what they contributed to the organization actually changed or impacted or brought in um, some sort of different um, contribution to the firm. And that could be from a number of different ways. Some of them said, I did it because I found some new ways to actually make revenues. Or I had some innovative solutions to the problems that we had in the organization. Or, or perhaps I was able to really impact the P&L in a really positive way in some way. Whatever it was, it, it impacted the larger good of the organization and not just themselves. Now, culture certainly doesn't exist by itself. Um, and to say that all Asians have these cultural preferences and all Westerners don't would be a mistake, right? We all have, I think, a, a variety of different things that, that impact how we behave, including personality, our leadership style, um, in addition to the cultural preferences that we have. As we educate our future leaders, how could we tap into the best of our cultural attributes so that we can teach individuals to be artful in pushing back? Not necessarily to be pushy in pushing back, to be artful in pushing back, or challenging authority figures in a way that's respectful, right? How do we do that? That is an art form. As I understand the implications of my own scary lady story, it reinforces a central wisdom that I have learned and have been teaching to the people that I've been coaching and also um, working with, um, advising. We need to take personal risks in order to grow, personal risks that allow us to grow. And we can only help other people when we have experienced life ourselves and have taken ourselves out of our comfort zone. And it often takes another person, a trusted advisor, a mentor, a colleague, a devil's advocate to tell us about our blind spots.